In this training module, we'll be going over the basic functions of a voltmeter and how you can use it in locating problems within your irrigation system. We'll be talking about AC and DC voltage, continuity, as well as ohms of resistance in the wire path. An irrigation system incorporates a hydraulic and an electrical component. The electrical component is related to the controller and the valves. The controller is powered by either 120 or 240 VAC, and the transformer converts this voltage into 24 volts AC. When it's time to water, the controller sends a 24 VAC signal to the valve's solenoid, which causes the solenoid plunger to retract. This allows that the small amount of water is kept on the diaphragm upper surface to exit through the valve, allowing the diaphragm to lift, causing the valve to open. When one of these components does not work as expected, a voltmeter is a handy tool that can help you diagnose where the problem resides. We recommend that you get a voltmeter that can test for alternating current, direct current, resistance, and continuity. Alternating current is the V-dial position on a voltmeter. The wavy line designates that the voltmeter is set for AC voltage. Direct current can also be measured with the voltmeter dial in the V position, but this time with a straight line to read a DC circuit. Resistance is tested with a voltmeter set at the ohms dial position. Continuity is also assessed at the ohms position. On most voltmeters, the display shows the letters OL along with a small omega icon. This is the position for checking continuity. When checking for continuity, all power must be off to the component. Continuity is either open or closed circuit. Important note on continuity. Continuity only verifies that you have a connection, but does not indicate the quality of the connection. A partial connection, as in the case of a stranded wire with only one strand touching another, will give a positive continuity test. This will not allow for the free flow of electricity. A voltmeter can read high and low voltage. High voltage is present at the wall outlet in a house or building. Some controllers are hardwired, bringing power directly from the electrical panel. Low voltage is found inside the controller. The transformer steps the voltage down to 24 volts for safety reasons. Voltage can be in the form of alternating current or direct current. Alternating current, or AC, is the type we use in the house. Direct current, or DC, is the type produced by batteries. An example of what you might need to test for voltage is if your controller has a blank display or you see a no AC message. You first need to verify that there is electricity at the power source. You can do so by setting the voltmeter to read for VAC and to read high voltage. Voltmeters will usually show a wavy line to denote alternating current. When testing high voltage, use caution. Hunter Industries recommends that a licensed electrician performs these tests. On the receptacle, the round hole is the ground. The longer slot is called the neutral leg, and the smaller slot is referred to as the hot leg. To test voltage at the receptacle, Without touching the metal end of the black voltmeter lead, insert it into the neutral longer slot. Likewise, without touching the red voltmeter lead, insert it into the hot shorter slot. Proper voltage at a receptacle should range between 115 and 125 volts AC. Once you confirm electricity at the power source, you may test the transformer by placing each probe on each of the screw terminals marked 24 VAC. The order of the probes here will not matter. A good transformer will read between 24 and 28 volts AC. The same test can be performed when you're testing voltage on a particular station. You'll need to activate the station you're going to test. Touch one probe to the common terminal and the other one to the screw terminal corresponding to the station you are testing. The order of the probes does not matter as this is alternating current. You can perform the same test on the valves to confirm that voltage is getting to the valves.
A voltmeter can also be used to test the resistance of a wire path or a solenoid to see if it's shorted. Usually, the first sign that there might be a short in the solenoid or in the wires is an error message on the controller. With no stations running, set the VOM to ohms 200. Touch one lead of the VOM to the common terminal and the other one goes to each of the station terminals. All the valves will have similar readings except for the station showing the error message. Here you are testing the field wire and the solenoid. Now you can go to your valve box and test just the solenoid. Resistance is measured in ohms, so the voltmeter needs to be set to ohms. To test the resistance on a solenoid, the solenoid needs to be disconnected from the wire. Touch each of the probes to each of the solenoid leads. The order does not matter on AC solenoids. A shorted solenoid will read between 0 and 10 ohms. A solenoid that reads between 7 and 20 ohms is considered a slow shorted solenoid. This solenoid will short out after being active for long periods of time. As a rule of thumb, any solenoid with resistance of less than 20 ohms is considered a shorted solenoid. A good solenoid should read between 21 and 60 ohms. Another function you can perform with a voltmeter is testing for an open or a closed circuit also known as continuity. This test is particularly useful when troubleshooting sensors. Sensors operate by opening a normally closed circuit when the sensor becomes active. An example of when you would need to test for continuity is if you have a sensor that keeps your controller off even when there is no rain. This might be a sign of a broken sensor wire. To test for continuity, the voltmeter needs to be set to ohms as we're trying to see if there's any resistance in the circuit. You will need to disconnect the sensor wires from the controller and touch each probe to each of the sensor wires. Some voltmeters will emit a high-pitched noise when the circuit is complete, and they will display the amount of resistance in the circuit. When you're dealing with DC voltage, such as the one used by our battery-operated controllers, you'll need to set your voltmeter to read for volts DC. DC voltage is simply a pulse, so when you test for DC voltage, make sure you have the common wire touching the black probe and the station wire touching the red probe. When you turn on a station from the controller, you will only see a quick reading at the voltmeter. This setting can also be used to test batteries in general. The red lead goes on the positive terminal and the black lead goes on the negative terminal. As you can see, a voltmeter comes in very handy when you're troubleshooting your irrigation system. It's important that your voltmeter can read for AC voltage and DC voltage, and that it can test for resistance and continuity. There must be 24 volts AC coming out of the controller and going out to the valves. The resistance of a good solenoid fluctuates between 21 and 60 ohms. Hunter sensors are normally closed, so the normal state of a sensor circuit should be closed. Therefore, if you detect an open line when testing for continuity, you either have a wet sensor or a break in the sensor circuit. Finally, remember that battery-operated controllers only emit a brief pulse to open or close a valve. Refer to your voltmeter's owner manual for specific instructions on how to get the best out of it.